Christina, starting your own business comes with a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And I'm sure that there were challenges along the way as you started Healthy Heaven. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the trials or struggles or what you had to overcome and deal with as you were starting this business? Well, the first year I was in business, my husband didn't like me working 70 hours a week. So he left. <laughs> so I was forced with a divorce. Um, and the bad thing is that he left for one of my aerobic teachers. So that was, I think, the hardest. But it, that, I believe that was the breaking stone because then I had to show the world that I could stand on my own two feet and make something of my dream. So your challenges made you stronger and more determined because I, I can't imagine dealing with those kinds of things and still carrying on and putting in the time to run a business, did you have to put just 110% into your work? I had to put even more. Uh, the, the hours that you put in, because again, remember I was in the learning phase. I had to learn from scratch because there was no other uh, business like mine. There was no fitness store. I had the first fitness store in California. In fact, I think the first fitness store in the United States because back then everything was was the health store with the organic foods, the vitamins and the herbs. There was no other fitness stores unless you found them in the back of Muscle Mag magazines with those protein powders, oh, skinny guy, gain weight. Though That was the only um, fitness um, era that, that exist in those days. As you were developing your business and dealing with these personal challenges, were you also trying to balance raising a family on top of everything else? I had three kids. They were all two years apart. Uh, and then I was a single mom, so it made it even harder. Uh, but again, like, like all women, when we get determined to succeed, there's nothing that's going to stop us. How did you find that you could balance that with your kids and, and finding the time that they needed for you as a mom and then the amount of time that it takes to start a business? Did you have any particular secrets or things that worked for you? Because there are a lot of women out there that struggle with this challenge of, of trying to raise a family, whether they're single mothers or not, and, and trying to run a business. And you were building a business at that time. What was your secret? Well, I was fortunate. I had my own business, so the punishment that my kids got is they would have to come to work for me. And so they hated, they hated that. So they, they were kind of on their, on their goods, you know, trying to be good because, God, I don't want to have to go in there and sit and watch mom work for 10 hours. So that was a good, the good part. But then they also learned. I, I taught them to, to work hard. And every one of my kids went through college. They went through grammar school, high school, college, and working in my store. If we were to talk to your children, they're grown now, what do you think they would say was the most important thing that they learned from that experience as they watched you develop that business and, and try to balance raising a family as a single parent? Oh, my kids are very proud of me, especially my daughters. I think that gave them uh, uh, the balance of being strong because they always uh, would say, Mom, I want to grow up to be just as strong as you are. Um, so they learned that there is no easy, e easy, easy life. Everything has to be determination. So I, I, think it's, I think that they enjoy it. I think they're better women for it, um, and it made me stronger because people, are, especially your kids, they, you can teach them all you want, but they follow into your footsteps. So telling them to become a better person uh, doesn't work, but if they follow in your footsteps, if you give them an example, and I did that by working 80 hours a week, um, and not failing because there's a lot of times when I wanted to give up um, When things got hard, I wanted to give up But it was my determination to say I'm not going to give up because I'm not going to show my children that I'm a failure
So it was the two of us grew together. All my kids and, and myself, we grew to get together. That is so inspirational, and I'm sure as people watch this interview and look at what you have overcome in building your business and the positive outcomes that it's had on your family, maybe this will encourage those women out there that are struggling themselves to, to build something that they love and, and to know that they're actually teaching their kids some valuable lessons as well. So I thank you for sharing that. Um, and I would like to ask you, as you were going down this path and, and building this business with Healthy Heaven, I know things kind of changed and you, you went in some different directions. Can you tell us what your next step was in that journey? Well, the first uh, Healthy Heaven was a store. We sold supplements. Um, and then came the yogurt and the protein drinks. So in the back of my little small store, I opened up a juice bar. And I believe I was the first one to open up a juice bar. Uh, and I was right the two doors down from Bally Spa. So uh, I had the yogurt. I had the fresh squeezed juices and carrot juice. So did they become customers of yours? Oh, definitely. You know, you bring them in after they work out. And, and a lot of people never even had protein. A lot of people never even had yogurt. And the protein uh, back in the, the 80s were, was horrible. I mean, this, the proteins you had to basically hold your nose and chug it down. So I learned how to make protein sweet. And that was from the fr fresh fruit and the yogurt. And people would come in and, wow, how do you make this taste so good? Well, it's like cooking. You know, if you know how to cook, you add a little bit of this, you add a little bit of that, and, and then you, you create something that is really good tasting. And that's what I lear how I learned about protein and flavoring, is through making protein drinks. <laughs> the true test of whether something tastes good is often to give it to your child. What did your children think of these products, of the protein drinks? They didn't like it. Uh, again, you know, the protein back then was so horrible that even all the yogurt and all the fruit that you put in there, kids wouldn't drink it. Now today, they're like milkshakes. So, you know, my grandkids, they love, they're always say, Grandma, give me some more of that protein drink, you know, the pre-made ones. and. And so forth. So back back in when my kids were small, I had to tell them that this was good for you. And like anything else, you had to say this will, you know, with the with the girls, I would say, drink your protein because that would make you have long, beautiful hair and make you beautiful like a princess. And then with my son, I would say, hey, you want to grow up to be strong and have a lot of muscles and have all the girls look at you? So you have to find a way to teach your kids why they have to eat healthy and why they, 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 they can't eat unhealthy. Once again, another living by example <laughs> moment. <laughs>